Hi friends, welcome back to another video and episode of the James Red Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about the importance of photography and history. I think it should be an interesting topic. I have to organize a lot of thoughts and make them come out of my mouth in a way that sounds cohesive and not like I'm having a stroke, so that'll be a journey we'll go on together today. No promises. Uh, but first I want to talk about the conversation that I had with my friend Will in the last podcast episode slash video that went up on my channel. It was in terms of content. I mean, it was an hour and 30 minutes long. Fantastic conversation. In terms of production quality, it was good, but it wasn't, it wasn't what I want it to be. And what I did was I just, I, I, I went the easiest route, which was you take the Google Hangout recording, download it, turn it into a podcast. This introduces all sorts of wonderful variables. Well, it starts with the fact that he's streaming himself to me from the other side of the country. Then I'm streaming myself to, uh, out to you guys. And uh, there are a lot of variables that come along with that. What I'm trying to get to is this middle ground, which I would call the software middle ground, where you, you, know, you have some nice software, you, you, you organize some things to where everything sounds better and looks better. Long story short. Uh, so I'm I'm working on that. I think I've figured out a good method, and we're gonna we're gonna try it next time. Uh, then the, the highest level of podcasting is what you would see in like maybe a, an H three H three or Joe Rogan podcast, where they have these these physical boxes that you can push buttons and turn knobs, and you push a lever up that makes a Star Wars sound. And, uh, and maybe one, one day I'll get there, but I try to keep things fairly simple, take on as little as possible. And for what I'm trying to do, this should work really well. And I've already got it pretty much dialed for uh, my solo podcast, but it's just introducing another person into the mix. Hold on. I have to breathe. I forget to do that sometimes. I probably need some water, but it's in the, hold on. I'll be right back. Ah, this is good. This is good. All right. Where's my coaster? Where's my... I don't have a coaster. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Here, I'll use this lid as a coaster. That works, I guess. Oh, boy. Okay. What... The coaster that's holding my drink right now is... Is a metaphor for how... For how I went about recording the podcast well. Okay. All right. So, let's talk about the history of photography and importance. The importance of photography and history. So I, I have many random obsessions. And they come in and they go, right? Now, the more interesting the topic to me, the more intense the obsession gets. A lot of times these topics are pretty abstract. You, you wouldn't necessarily think that I would be interested in such a thing. Um, what we're going to be talking about has to do with meteor events. <laughs> But I promise it ties to what to the end goal. But this particular obsession is one that I came across with a uh, through a Joe Rogan podcast. I listen to his podcast; they're like three hours long, fantastic. And he, I first found him speaking with a guy named Randall Carlson, who is his theory is that uh, around twelve thousand years ago, a meteor hit the Earth or a series of meteors hit the earth, caused a series of floods. Because at that point in time, the earth was in an ice age. And when the meteor hit uh, the ice cap, which actually at that point was covering all of Canada, it caused a, a tremendous, uh, almost instant melting of the ice cap, created an enormous flood of epic proportions. And he says that that if you look at the Pacific Northwest, you can see the remnants of this very clear. And he makes an incredibly compelling case for this. He shows photos of a, a cliff, an enormous 400-foot-tall cliff that is cataract-shaped, like, almost like a cataract waterfall goes over it, or went over it, kind of like... Uh, the Niagara Falls is today. But 
In the photo he shows, he shows Niagara Falls in comparison to the size of the, these cliffs. And Niagara Falls fits neatly in the corner, just a little, little tiny. Oh, that's a cute little waterfall. <laughs> these, these waterfalls were enormous. And uh, this is just an example of, of all sorts of data he shows. He also shows ripples in the land that looks like what you would see at the beach when the water runs over, creates, you know. But these ripples are are uh, hundreds of feet long, uh, you know, 50 feet tall, outrageous uh, power that would go into creating this sort of this sort of land feature. And like I said, a very compelling case. He receives a lot of criticism from the scientific communities for this theory. And so that will tie into um, what I'm about to get to in a second. Graham Hancock, another guy that was on uh, one of the podcast episodes with him and Joe Rogan, he is more interested in uh, civilizations of the past and and uh and so they they're they're kind of buddies and he also had a lot of interesting things to say, very compelling cases. So, I've been fascinated with this to the point that I went to sleep the other night. I slept sort of I think I slept sort of restlessly that night. And so, you know, you have these episodes where sometimes you'll go to sleep in the night and then you wake up randomly throughout the night and sometimes very like a lot. And whenever I woke up, I was thinking about meteor strikes and, and floods and, and all, all sorts of c- catastrophism. And I was like, okay, I need to tone it back. I, I, need, I need to, I need to uh, watch something else, something a little less heavy. So I got, I've, I've been very obsessed. And I've, it's okay, I'm managing it. So I learned about meteor events that have happened in the past. Now this was a media, this was a, an alleged meteor event that we have sort of evidence for in a sense where we have physical remains of it which is very compelling and but we also have stories from around that they, they say are from around that time period like Noah's Ark and other stories that talk about a uh, a catastrophic flood and so it all sort of ties together in an interesting way Fast forward a, le- 12, a lot of years, and you have the Tunguska meteor event in 1908. Now, you may have seen pictures of when this happened. This happened over Siberia, and the meteor came into the atmosphere, pretty large meteor, blew up in the atmosphere, as most do, right? You see a shooting star, it burns up way up in the atmosphere, Uh but when it blew up, it destroyed 800 miles of forest. Now, we actually have a photo of the forest that it destroyed. So this makes a much more compelling argument that this event actually happened. And it's pretty much agreed upon that this happened, that that, that, is, that is how it happened. Very quickly, I will be right back. It's okay. I will use the power of editing to come back. Uh, quickly as opposed to in uh, what 15 minutes I have to pick up my wife I shall return Um, please enjoy this commercial break just kidding I'll be right back oh yes the power of editing I was actually gone for a while while I was gone I had two kids I ordered a cat snake on a cat hyphen snake on Amazon it's like a hundred thousand dollars so to fund that I started a business that sells flamethrowers so when I left 12,000 years ago I was talking about the Tunguska meteor event And now I want to move on to the Chelyabinsk, I hope I said that correctly, meteor event. This is one that was captured on video. This happened in 2013, I believe. It was captured on video by many different dash cams. It happened in Russia, as all meteor strikes seem to happen. And, you know, because of the, I guess, insurance problems in Russia, everybody has dash cams on their car. So you end up with, comp, you know, meanwhile in Russia compilations, you have somebody crossing the street on a giraffe naked with a bazooka in their hand, and they're being chased by a tank. Good times. Uh, but it captured this meteor event, and it, sh- it came in, broke up in the air, shattered a bunch of windows. A lot of people were injured, which is crazy. But from what I understand from Mr. Randall Carlson is if it was a little bit bigger or if it came in on a steeper um, descent, it could have 
killed people. Then we would really pay attention, right? We kind of forgot about it. But then we really pay attention. So I guess what I want, we have varying levels of documentation in these different um, events that have happened over time. And I, I think it demonstrates the power of different types of documentation, how photography uniquely places itself within that. Uh, and by the way, if you hear some rumbling outside, that is because someone has decided to purchase the loudest muffler on the planet and sit, turn on their car, sit in the parking lot and just let it run and finally leave as he is doing. Uh, so, so document, uh, so photographs are a, are a unique way to document things in, in an objective fashion. And I've always said that what they do is they, they show you what is and they say, what do you think about this? They don't, they, don't impl- they don't tell you what their opinion is. They let you, they let you gather the information for yourself and make your own decision. So when you layer on top of that compositional thoughtfulness, as, I, as which is basically a lot of what this channel is about, when you layer on top of that um, artistic intentionality, you you can end up with something very different, something that emotionally affects people in a in a, a equally unique way to the photograph itself, right? So this is why I think it's important to work on. You, to practice and work on your understanding of lighting and color theory and, um, and composition. <clears throat> so I, th- I think, I think that the way that we, the, the way that we should think of photography more than just pretty Instagram photos of interesting people um and and, and, uh, capturing the the beautiful things of life right which is what instagram is um in a lot of ways that's how a lot of people interact with instagram it would be a fantastic idea to remember that photography is uh, photography is an excellent way to engage with people's emotions but not in a detrimental way so I think that what you can have is when you when you engage emotions without factual evidence to back those emotions, you end up in a situation that we have faced uh, uh, in America with our political situation, where you have a lot of you have a lot of emotional appeals from people. You have a lot of people saying uh, that that this is an enormous issue, but they don't have any sort of data to back up what they're saying but emotional emotional appeals are way more intriguing to the human mind a lot of times than data so we kind of go along with it and we hear it enough we start to get in our head and we start to maybe even believe it or at, at the very least accept that that maybe kind of the way things are a little bit and it works its way into our our psyche um when when you look at the photography that has happened uh, from people like Steve McCurry, uh, James Noctway, Kevin Carter. Um, these are people who have captured the extremely difficult parts of life. They share the reality of what is. And, and sometimes they contradict what we think is the reality. Sometimes they push out of the way what isn't, Right. And so, I mean, without photos of World War II, uh, of Auschwitz, great example, uh, you know, Soviet Union, I, not that I look at a, a preponderance of Soviet Union photography, but, <laughs> but I'm sure it's out there. Um, when, you look at, when you look at these photos, th- these are incredibly important archives. But when you take, some, when you take these photographers, Steve McCurry, James Conway, Kevin Carter, and so on, these are people who have refined their craft, and it hits us in a different way. And that's important. That's an important distinction. We need that. Cell phones are good. <laughs> or so, well, Cell phones can be used to craft wonderful photography as well. Uh, let's say the, the common cell phone shooter <laughs> is not a bad thing in itself. But we must recognize the difference, and we must recognize the importance of photography in history. 
that's it. Uh, very quickly, I want to I want to recommend an app that I use to sort of um, coagulate all of the elements that go into these podcasts. First off, I, I or well. I've been using an app called Notion, which is an excellent note-taking uh, uh, project organization app. I need to get all of the nonsense in my head. By the way, this is not some sort of brand deal. These are, these are basically free apps. I need to get all the nonsense in my head and vagities into something that is concise and laid out. And I need something that is a project manager, among other things, calendar to-do list. But I've been using an app called Notion, but just today, I so it's laid out in a block interface where you create things in blocks. So uh, sort of like Squarespace, if you ever use that, if you've spent any time on the internet, net, you know what Squarespace is, but um, it creates things in blocks, right? You have a header block, text block, image block, bullet points, this sort of thing. And I need all of that. I need those things. I don't need the crazy drawing stuff that you can do in a lot of these apps. I... I the free version, so well, the paid version is $8 a month. And I'm just not interested in taking on another something per month <laughs> bill in my life right now. So I hit my limit of 600 blocks. And it's not like you can delete a block and then create a new one. Once you do use 600 blocks, it's all over. So I found another app called Notebook. Very, very creative. This is some Elon Musk level thinking notebook by a company called Zoho. They are actually the people who I um, I have created my personal, I forget what you call it, basically the email where it's like you, your name plus your website. So james at jamesred.net is mine. A lot of people, for a long time, I thought you had to pay for this, but they, they are one of the few services, the only service really that I've found that offers it for free. Zoho, zoho.com. They make this app. It's fantastic. It's good for organizing projects. If you want to actually get things done and go towards the goal of, of what I'm talking about, which is creating compelling photographs that change the world. Sorry. <laughs> this is a, this is a great app for that. Notebook, note, notebook, note, notebook. Okay. That's it for this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, more to come. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.